Now this is the sketch that I did, uh, a pencil sketch. Uh, it's actually graphite pencil that the graphite lays on the surface and then you uh, get a damp brush and spread all over the um, the graphite. Um, where you've been very dense, it comes up dark. Where you've been um, very weak with it, it comes up light. And that gives me an idea of tone and shape. But in this case, I'm actually going to change the, the, the light. The light, although it was an exceptionally dull day, the light, as you can see, is coming sort of just from the left, from, sorry, from the right. But I'm going to change this because I want shadow running across the road here. And I want that part of the church tower and spire, or that side, to be in shadow, that to be in shadow, that to be in complete shadow, and these to be in shadow. So I'm reversing it, which I've, oh, and of course the chimneys, instead of the light hitting the right hand side, it's actually hitting the left, creating a shadow on the right. So that's the basic thought behind um, this particular um, painting. So I'm gonna use a little bit of memory, a little bit of a photograph that I took, and just a little bit, or quite a lot, um, working from the sketch. And as you can see, I've put the drawing down. I've actually introduced a couple of cards. I'm going to put, put a couple of figures in. Um, but um, the cards are going to be quite interesting. We'll see how those go. Um, but all together, um, I'm quite looking forward to it, actually. Well, I'm going to use two brushes. That's a number five rigger and a number four squirrel no it's not squirrel it's synthetic mop brush that points very well and i think those are the only two brushes that i shall need really uh, because of that one the, the mop brush that points extremely well now my normal way of working going to start off with the mop uh, thoroughly damped and i'm just going to wet my paints um, purely because um, I think, no, I don't think I used them yesterday. Um, but if you don't use them for a day or two, then they need just moistening, particularly in the summer months. Not quite so bad this time of year. Um, and what I do like to do when you moisten them, and as you can see, I picked up a bit of colour from another. Uh, so I've spread the yellow throughout them which is not ideal, but isn't it fun when you do that sort of thing and all of a sudden you think, hmm, now I've got that problem now. Um, how am I going to get on with my colours? Well, we'll see. So me, me water is already quite as pure because I picked up the lemon yellow there and uh, it um, picked up quite a bit and went back into my water. But never mind. Let's not be too concerned. Let's just spread the water onto the paper. Now it will shine when you, um, um, because of my light that I have on the board. Um, but um, hope that doesn't disturb your viewing too much because it uh, gives a nice light to it. You can see the areas. It's also interesting to be able to see the areas that are damp and the areas that are dry. Um, and as you can see, I'm picking around most of the buildings, but I'm actually damping over the church spire because I'm going to have very light coming through there. So that's going to be dark. But this side probably be dark against the light. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use... Payne's Grey, Windsor and Newton, artist or professional quality, Payne's Grey. It was an extremely grey, miserable day. And I want to depict that within these shapes of clouds. So that goes like that. Going to have little bit more cloud work there, just a little bit more. Notice how I roll the brush across the paper, gradually lifting off, creating a tapered effect. 
Cloud shapes, well, what are cloud shapes? We don't really know. So we just create a shape. Clean the brush again. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to use cadmium red. All right, with a touch of that yellow. Because I want an orange feel coming in on the right. That's where the light is. It's where the sunlight is. To start off, it needs to be a little bit more yellow than that. There we are. That's better. Sneak that back in. And I'm introducing that into the clouds. Which is quite an interesting thing to do. Now, if you mix these colours, they'll turn gray, They'll turn green. Place them onto the... the uh, the um, damp paper and let them merge all being well they should remain their colours their true colours and I'm coming right the way through <coughs> right the way down there now cleaning the brush and just removing some of the moisture onto my paper kitchen roll and just lifting off so a dry brush lifts off color i want to make this a colorful scene and already we've got that colorful scene there which um it's interesting that i like that you know you've got to um paint what you like put colors in you like i know it's sometimes difficult when you're trying to paint certain colors and they don't work but then finally I'm putting in some dark Payne's Grey. And by putting that in, you can create cloud shapes. Just got to watch it. Don't go too dry. Don't want to go too damp with this. And while it's still wet, it will blur nicely. And you can bang that in underneath. Um, and you can put another little area there. And you can introduce a little touch there. It's all going to dry off considerably lighter. Just removed a bit of moisture from the brush. Because I want some of these clouds to... I don't want to make it too fussy. Too busy. But some of these clouds need to pass the church tower. There we are. And isn't that a lovely interesting sky? Not worried about this side. Got to remember it will all dry up very much uh, um, lighter than that so just notice that that needs to go out of picture there we are don't know why but probably don't make any difference to the end product <clears throat> so that is the start of the painting i've used paints gray artist quality professional quality windsor newton cadmium lemon for the yellow and cadmium red for the orange and I've dropped those in, leaving one or two little hard edge white patches for clouds. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to put in the road. Um, so I'm going to use Payne's Grey again. Don't very often use Payne's Grey, but I'm, I'm, I'm just for some unknown reason feel like using Payne's Grey today, which is uh, unusual for me. But anyway. We'll see what happens. Payne's grey, picking around the path as it goes out to the left. Then I'm introducing, now there's a bit of yellow there that I didn't want. I'm introducing a bit of cadmium red now into that Payne's grey. Just to give me a slightly different feel. Just watch right where them, I just feel like being colourful today. Whether it works out or not, I'm not really sure whether it will. But um, And then as we come forward, I'm adding a little bit of the red again. And I said a little bit too much. Just spread it through. Like that. And the path comes like that. Watch the vehicles are not intruding on the path. Uh, otherwise I might get a ticket. Um, now I'm going to use... Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. What shall I use? Um, oh, blue. We need a blue. Let's put a bit of ultramarine. Splash a bit of ultramarine in there. 
just to cool it down a touch. It's a bit fierce, that colour. And then we have a bit more warmer colour now on the path there. As the path comes towards us, we will introduce a little blue again. Well, I'm really going colourful today, which um, I'm warming to, funny enough, which I'm actually enjoying using colour for once. And notice now we've got a little bit of... I don't know, it's damp, it's, it's, it was a damp day. So I'm going to show a little of the sort of creaminess, bit of burnt umber in with the red and the yellow to try and get a brownie cream. And what I'm going to do, we're just going to draw that across like that in the road itself. Not actually going to show up that much but at least it does show a little bit of the reflection of the building in the road which you would get if it was um, a, a damp day now you're watching this in real time so you can obviously rerun um, I know it's probably a little bit fast um, for you to paint along but you can paint along and then stop um, the video and rerun um, right now don't want any growing of the uh, of the um, roof areas up into the um, the sky. So I'm going to now paint the building. Now the building quite creamy. So I'm going to use raw sienna, and I want to put a bit of lemon yellow, cadmium lemon, with that. And uh, it's a little on the green side. I don't think it was green actually. So a little bit more of that and a little bit more of that. And to take the green off, that's a, a little bit of burnt umber too. Any sort of um, fairly weak um, mix of cream, greeny cream. These windows go virtually right up to the gutter. So I'm going to pull that to there. So that window finishes there. That window finishes there, and that one finishes there, right on the edge there. And now there is a sign of some sort on the end there that finishes at that sort of plane. Just pull that across, there we are. Then we have a sign. This is actually a salon, hairdress and salon, this building here. A very popular with not only locals but also the um, let's just use that there as well let's just paint that across uh, but also the um, lots of uh, residents um, in the uh, Chompsford area too I have relations that do use that to have their hair looked after as it were so there we go that's that lovely now as the paint begins to you lose the paint on the um on the brush then it's a sign there that's the reason that's yellow as well uh, the rest is white that's brilliant now the other one is a little bit more cream and it's got a touch of red in it so i've moved over and that then finishes there, there's two buildings there, one there, that's all in shadow, but we'll try and bang that in, and that finishes there, so that's one building, uh, then this building is quite cream, uh, so I'm going to use burnt umber for that, and that's a little, I've actually picked up a bit of red there, let's just go burnt umber, there we go. It's got to be very weak, but it's more burnt umber sort of colour. Well, that's the way I see it. You know, we're not getting too technical. Put a bit of that in there as well. It's it's all about c capturing light. 
as it is um, always with um, with my uh, paintings. You know, it's it really is a matter of trying to capture the mood of the day in some form of light. Put a wash on that as well, although it's going to be very, very, very dark. There we are. And uh, not sure what happens down here, but we're not really worried. Um, that's got a little bit of that there. We're going to have some figures there. Um, and then we've got the Tower of the Church. That's got quite a bit of warm tone to it. So I'm using burnt umber with a touch of the red as well to create the tone of the church and I'm going to be quite dark with this you know it, it was it was not a brilliant day um, and I'm um, going to go in with the shadow side first and we do have buttress areas there which I want to try and depict without painting everyone in and I'm going to paint around the belfry window and finish the good thing about this brush at points so you can do fine detail as well as more intricate you can almost draw with it really then when we come down to there you've got to remember that's the shadow side and then we do actually have a pretty much a red tile. Now I'm going to use light red now into that because there's a red tile part of the church that just marries up with that. And it, it will be lighter and it goes round that side of the building. Then of course we have that lovely It's a brick wall that heads off down the slope and back up. There we are. And let's bring that brick wall right away up to there. We'll, we'll gradually get lost with that eventually. Now on the sunny side, putting a bit more light red and just a bit more water. Because this is the sunny side of the tower. And uh, let's just use a bit more. And it's quite important this part of the of the painting um, because we do need to show feeling of of warmth that's what I'm trying to depict here a feeling of warmth I think that's the word really for this particular scene now next I'm going to use Payne's Gray again and I'm going to use, um, what am I going to use? Um, ah, let's use a light red into that. Because I want the tiles on the roofing. Quite blue, he grey. So, there we go. Nice bluey grey, a little bit more light red perhaps. So it's quite a bluey grey. There we are. Now I'm going to use the mill stick here to support. And to start with, we've got a ridge tile that needs to be painted in. Like that. And that is quite a thick affair that way because we can see both edges. Here we can only see the top of one side. There and there and to that mix now I'm going to add um, cobalt blue because I want a bluer feel I don't want too much paint on the brush now because I want to try and depict if I can the feel of light catching the top of that roof not so much that side because that may be in shadow but can you see I'm not getting fussy? I'm just putting it in very, very light. This one will be the same. So I'm using the same mix at this moment. 
to paint that area in like that then I'm removing some of the paint now because I want this to be fairly light too there we are and it's all to be finished off later then we have a nice bit of red tiling so I'm coming back with me light red uh, quite weak too for this area here in actual fact that's a bit more water than that for this lovely part of the roof there this building that runs out of picture in actual fact you can see that I've sort of highlighted it goes right to the point then it go, runs down that side I've highlighted this the distance there it's warmer than the foreground at the moment um, but overall it's coming along quite well now the way in which I depict my windows will be um, quite um, quite loose um, and I'm going to use ultramarine with burnt umber there we are just those two colors and I'm removing quite a lot of moisture from the brush because overall I want this to be these to be dark but laid on with a dry brush now when we talk of dry brushes we don't mean a completely dry brush and what we mean is the brush that's got very little water on it so very little paint so that we can drag down like that and give the impression of glazing that is reflected not even painting in the the actual frames the white frames and that's the way you produce a quick version of windows they can all be just touched and fiddled later on there we are one there one there one there 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 we are it's as simple as that I'm going to leave those because they're going to be treated slightly different um, but there you go that's the way you put in a quick impression of windows now comes the um, the wall to the left and that is going to be purely um, bu -bu 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 -bum, light red with a bit of ultramarine in there um, I'm going to paint that down like that because that's the way it stands I always try and paint these areas the way they stand finish it along there that's that now weaken that considerably and paint in the sunlit side of the chimneys like that I'm going to try and get a bit of mood to these so there's quite a bit to be done oh and now the cars now the ca one car is cobalt blue so I'm putting that in in quite a bluey tone um, not that good with cars but um, hey ho let's um, as they say ho ho let's give it a go and that's what I'm doing really there you go just trying to get a depiction of the way that vehicle um, stands like that um, the wheel arch see a little bit of the frontage but overall don't forget perspective when you're doing vehicles like this vital that you get the perspective in there and of course the lights the rear lights always a useful one um, tool to um, 
to have to produce there we are so that's the first vehicle gone in um, don't think it parked particularly well but there you go now I'm going to use cobalt blue again let's use ultramarine sorry because I need a black ultramarine and burnt umber so it's got to be very dark and that's what this car was but it got a lot of shine to it there again I'm not using too much paint to depict these just see there's a bit of an arch to that it goes around like that um, not really depicting a particular make of vehicle either um, which um, obviously would be um, well not a problem I suppose not really uh, concerned don't think anybody would really worry about the make of vehicle to be fair leaving notice how I'm leaving some touches of white because that shows the body sh the shine on the body work and if you can get that shine on the bodywork, um, it does help to give you a, a more realistic uh, look, I suppose. Down there, a bit of the window. And this slopes down like that. And where do we go here? Oh, there's a number plate, yellow. Other than that, we've got the white of the lamps number plate squared up that I think probably does it for the two vehicles all the time I'm keeping an eye on my um, my drawing that's actually standing up there I'm not going to move the camera because I think it's in a good position there for you to see but um, I'll um, be post um, it will be dotted in between my um, painting processes. Um, so you will see it shortly. Um, okay. Now the windows. Actually I'm going to use paint. Um, Windsor blue or Prussian blue for the windows. Um, very weak. Too much water. There we go, that's a bit better, not too much water on that, otherwise it would be too, be depicting too. There we are, so that's the windows uh, at the front and the rear, and then we want something a little stronger for the windows. So I'm going to use Burnt um, uh, Prussian Blue again, or Windsor Blue, with a little of the Cadmium Red. Because this has got to be, got to show a glimpse of, of reflection on there. There we are. Brilliant. So that's the two vehicles. Well, it's absolutely pouring out there. I don't know whether you can hear that, but... Um, uh, anyway, it's lovely in here. So now I'm going to use the, that same mix, perhaps with a little bit more red in there, because a bit of ultramarine, because I want a bit of a muddy colour. There we go. Because I haven't done this roof, which is something that I've only just noticed. Um, so, but to ring the changes of colour doesn't make any real difference nice to have different colors in different areas you know good that is that now I'm going to look at the distant tree now we've got to be a bit careful with that don't want that to be to overpower so I'm going to use let's go in let's go in somewhere there going to use raw sienna with Winter blue and the reason I've used the raw sienna there because 
It is dark, but I don't want it to be too dark. Right, we do the centre. It's like a fir tree of some sort. Uh, with spiky edges, which we can actually um, depict with this brush. See the way I'm getting the spiky outside edges by gently using the tip of the brush. There you are. And that actually spills over the front of the church, which gives a nice foil for that. And that holds that right hand side in. Just leave a bead of unpainted on top of that wall. There we are, a little bit of light coming through. Now I'm going to go very dark in a couple of areas. Same two colours, only stronger. One area being the right hand side, because the sun is coming from the left. And also another area there. And that should highlight that distant wall. Comes like that. Now, the next thing is this very dark tree here. It will be very dark because the light's coming from the left. So, to get that real dark colour, I'm going, let's go in there. Windsor blue, Prussian blue, fine, either one of those, and I'm going to use Indian red. Ooh, see how really dark that colour is? I know you've probably got a bit of shine on that. It's quite red actually, and a bit more blue with that. And I'm going to add a touch of yellow, and that yellow is going to be raw sienna just to take the edge off but basically it's going to be very dark and just watch the way i apply this i'm going to be nice and you've got to remember that this it is a dense tree overhanging shrub or bush or whatever it is but on the outside edges you will see can be quite open too in that center there but on the outside edges you will see what I call not leafing but the leafing impressions that's what I'm looking to, to, to produce purely by dotting around you know don't try and make every branch look like a perfect branch because I don't think uh, in my experience, um, that is really good if you're looking to depict a um, a subject like this. Really, now I'm going to add a bit of yellow. Now, that's cadmium lemon. A bit dense there, and then we open up again. And you can, I don't know whether you can see that, but it's just going slightly on the green side. And I'm just touching back in there. Then I'm going to go dark again. Very dark. Blue. Red. And that is now going to stand just in front of parts of that tree, not all of it. There we are, look how dark that is. And it's standing extremely nicely. And it just overhangs that wall in places. And that's a brilliant foil for that left hand side. And also it just runs down that wall. It's laying on top of the wall and just streaming down in places just one or two little smaller touches here we are now i've gone into that part of the palette as you can see with windsor blue and i'm using oliza and crimson i've used quite a few colors today i don't know why that is don't ask me why because that's um that's the way i work sometimes um but basically um that gives me a nice dark color now is this too dark for our shadows? Well, just err on the side of caution and just add water. 
don't take too much moisture off of the brush and away we go now sun coming from the right you will see an overhang shadow on the building there always like a nice deep shadow finishes up at that corner like that no need to be too straight with that Just straighten it up a touch there perhaps then down the left hand side of the windows the other part of the window will shine through shortly then we have an overhang shadow from there up until that board and then from that board onwards until we come to the side of that building then that goes up like that and that is all in shadow and yep that's all in shadow just remove a little bit of moisture from the brush and that's in shadow as well and that goes inside the door well like that to about windows there so that cuts down there and shows the the edge of the window see where we've got the edge of the window there that's good then just a little more water because we have the shadow on the side here of the building which is a little bit lighter because we're getting reflected light possibly from another building out of picture which I know there was and we've got another corner of that building that's also in shadow see the way I'm, I'm trying to get a nice clean wash of colour vital to get this painting to work and that runs like that finished there but it just goes off at a bit of an angle because of, of the angle of the wall really good and now we continue along the rest of the building We're going to cut in down there and this is a lighter shadow as I said down that corner and I've gone cool with these shadows um, purely because I want the the light to be a little bit narrow with that one um, I want the light to show up the bright the bright light of the buildings it's it's nice inside shadow there nice inside shadow there that's a white door and that's I think is a white door so that shows nicely that goes straight up there and of course they've got that gable, that gable end just peeking out the top of that roof there then we've got under the overhang and the right hand side of those chimneys and if you notice I've not put any colour on those underneath there and the right hand side of that chimney there again no colour just a depiction of a chimney that's standing on that roof and if it is there's a shadow running up the roof like that look at that it's all beginning to come together very nicely right we'll leave that we've got that window is very dark there and there got the overhang roof line again um, got the dark and that is a dark window that's why I've left it purely um, unpainted dark doorway and a window there just gradually losing that really we've got figures there so that's not a problem and where are we going now that's a point we've got to get that chimney as well in 
with its associated shadow. Just a touch there for the overhang. Right, removing some of the moisture now because I want to pick up the shadow side of that spire. I want to keep that fairly straight if I can. That's it. A little bit of touching in to do there later on. And uh, now I'm going to pick up the buttress areas just with some paint like that. Going to pick up a little bit of detail there. Certainly on the window there. And this is where I'm going to introduce a bit of colour into the shadows. There we are. The, re the main reason for that, leave the window, is that we can then see the corner of that building, the roof of that building, like that. And that just gives a lovely little punch. See how that gives that punch in that distant, lovely warm punch that sends your eye to that area. And that's what it's all about. It's directing the eye towards the required um, parts of the picture. Um, right, we do have like buttress areas there. And we do have a touch of those there. Clean the brush, remove the paint, and just spread the colour from that buttress area there. And just a touch with that one, that's it. Yeah, we just see an impression of those buttresses there. Um, good. Now, let's go for the big shadows in the foreground. So, to start off, we do have shadow work that's running down this wall one or two little touches unpainted don't just block don't just religiously block everything in you know it's nice to leave a little bit of feeling of light reflected light I don't know whether you get a lot of reflected light onto uh, the um, the walls of uh, a uh, a brick wall but there you go now a little bit of red a little bit of Indian red going in there because I want this shadow to be a bit warmer now and to start off you would see just a little bit of shadow from the tree just add a bit more water to that from that overhanging tree a bit of dappled shadow running here and as I get into the foreground as a lot of you do know I get rather rather vicious with my uh, shadows and I end up pulling them right the way across like that yeah lovely Weaken the mix, and I always like to see just a touch this side, only weaker, considerably weaker. And that is a little strong, so just lift away. And we want to know why they're there. Well, we've got clouds, so why shouldn't we have a mood within shadows And it also helps to join up those shadows. And you can even add a finger just to soften those outside edges. Look at that. You can't do that with the brush, which um, is quite an interesting little area, that. And then, of course, under the cars, there's considerable shadow. like that and under there that then justifies those wheels 
And of course that shadow extends onto the path as well. Like that. Allow your shadows to dry. You must allow your shadow work to dry. Because if you don't, you end up with um, lots of scrubby marks, if that's the term. Good. So that is quite a long process, but we'll allow that to completely dry. Oh, just one thing that I did forget. A couple of things, actually, which is not unusual for me. Burnt umber with the blue ultramarine blue and a bit of red in there because this is the dark sh shadow area from the board work let's just add a bit more blue to that there we are for this building here it's in shadow there's boards to that building and I've made it quite blue. Like that. Very blue in fact. Right. Now I'm going to introduce burnt umber. Which makes it brown. And that packs a real punch on the corner of that building. It's packing punch that once you get to a certain level you will just want to push it a little bit further. And sometimes you push it too far and um, and you say, well, you overdo it, really, basically. Um, but um, that's that. Now, there is also a very dark area. So let's use more blue in that. Um, around the base of this building. There, there. Touch there. Touch there. Just a touch there. That's it. Just square that corner up. Just depicts that corner a little better. As that goes around. Good. Well, that just needs our good old famous finishing touches. Well, the all important finishing touches. I'm going to use the rigger for that. And I've got light red with a rigger that's only, well, it's wet, but it's not um, flooded with water and um, or paint. And I'm going to sharpen up the ridge tiles. There you go. There's another ridge tile there. Immediately that gives those roofs a bit of, a bit of context. Um, <clears throat> right, now this is a hairdressing shop here in Great Baddo, or in Great Baddo. It's called Salon 19, and obviously we do have some bits going on in there, in those windows. Lights and one or two bits and bobs a bit on that door too so what I'm doing I'm introducing a bit of color to this rather colorless scene now I'm going to pick up a real red here to put in the lights at the back of that vehicle there and of course there's a light at the back of that one 
<coughs> then we're going to put in the yellow um, for the number plate and actually fact just white but I'm making it yet yellow um, which is we've got the number plate there and we've got a number plate there that's actually white but I'm putting a yellow on that there we go and um, <clears throat> what else are we doing oh we're going to put some sort of orange in this window too um, a bit of orange there two little touches of orange edges along the bottom there now these may only look very small things but they are very much uh, important to the overall finished painting because finishing touches as most of you know um, are a little bit uh, you know I, I tend to get known for these and um, they do need to be included in your um, well in my paintings anyway um, now we're going to make that wall stand upright like that so give that a bit more warmth you see in the shadow but give it some warmth more in the foreground see where that is is very much warmer now as it's closer to us now we're going to mix take a bit of darker paint on the palette I'm, I'm really using what I've got on the palette really um, to um, to indicate certain uh, little finishing bits and bobs and I'm going to put in a silhouette of a figure there like that and a young child I'm going to have another figure standing there with someone standing next to them like that two heads and a little dog of some sort if I can get that to look like a dog I think that probably works there we are a couple of little Im impressions of figures put a bit of red on that figure there touch of red certainly that one there we are um, right now we're going to go quite dark now because we've got dark window surrounds on this window like that this one is also dark surrounded dark surround on that door then we do have Oh, this this door is actually quite quite dark um, could be dark green I can't quite see but there you go I'm going to pick up a little bit of shine to it see where I've just scratching across the surface but that's picking up some shine uh, on that and now I'm looking at the windows now there's a board there that's actually a shop sign then we have just lining this window a touch just to give me a bit of definition there then I'm going to put in what am I going to put in ah windowsill always useful remembering perspective of course then we have a little hint of the panes of glass now I say a little hint because I'm not putting everyone in but I'm just beginning to highlight some little touches that I think will make all of the difference to the the overlook, overlook of the window really so we're just putting one or two in we're not even worrying too much where they are you know in position wise although they've got to follow underneath each other but basically um, 
it's very much a suggestion rather I'm gonna go in down that corner there with a dark edge because I want to show show up the side of that because there is a door there that's very dark a bit lighter at the bottom then we have um, a step we show steps like that there we are that's a step as you step out of the shop that's it and then we're going to enhance this window here give that just a bit more depth of color in places not everywhere to help that window come forward I'm going to drop in a little bit of color there in that sign and uh, silhouette salon 13 now I've not actually put that in at all but I have uh, suggested a name and that's all you need to do right what else have we got um, let's just put in let's use this to put in a bit of shadow onto the onto the vehicle because um, I think it probably needs it and that front edge there like that leaving the number plate and we do have just a hint at um, a couple of uprights for the windows bring that up like that and this one as well window mustn't forget the windows on the cars because they're quite important to um, give us a little bit of depth to the whole thing oh and uh, oh, because that window is against the light we will have a small area there that's in shadow and I have forgotten the overhang shadow there and of course a secondary shadow running there and there is always useful too so we're gradually sort of we're gradually getting there with um, well of course the windowsill there and there's another windowsill in there another windowsill in there and of course we've got windows that just go around the corner there so we may as well depict those like that and a secondary shadow in that door so we're, we're beginning to pick up just those little little bit bits of extra touches that that I think make a big difference yes that's looking good just gonna put in not too much water here and just a little bit of dull sort of gray that's better because what I want to pick up here is just a sense with the rigor of the back edge of that and just a little bit of lining there just to denote that church tower or spire and uh, and then of course the window window there that's fine and I'm going to depict the The clock which is all important of course and let's just make that window a bit wider so it fits in to the look of the whole thing yeah we're okay with that and right now we're having a bit of warmth and we do have a touch of the curb now I always like to show curbs because they do give a feeling of depth when treated in the right way and of course we've got the curb here now that car could be 
a little bit bit naughty actually could be actually um parked up on the on the pavement but there you go so that's the curb easy enough nothing too fussy um, and then of course the odd line pulling the eye in to the picture not dissimilar to what I use when I'm um, doing crop markings you know it's always nice to give a bit of texture into the scene like that just gives the road a bit of aging like that you know it's not a brand new road it's been there a few years so let's give it a bit of texture one last thing I can see will be required is whoops is um, a little bit of lining on these ridge tiles here because I want to show a little bit of shading there and it will help just to show up that um, that roof line which is always uh, something that touch there or when it just blows up there a bit there we are and uh, just a tad the other one or two little touches and of course where it's lost I've actually shown it again there there we are so that completes that um, just a secondary shadow on that gable end there getting rid of all the light um, Hmm. Yeah, I think we can say that um, it won't be long before we uh, need to take the um, the surround away and we'll do little touches there. I like the idea of seeing the bottom of that there, and also one or two little squidgy marks. You've got to remember there again. This is. Uh, you know it's a work and building it's not brand new so it's have been established for some time so um, oh and that's actually let's, let's make that dark let's make that dark bit of brown in there uh, not red brown there we go because I want the black colour that's what I'm looking for because that is a blackboard with writing on and the way you deliver that is you create the surround of the blackboard like that and then where you've left spacing you dot in between the board itself and all of a sudden it's an impression of a of a board um, with writing on really and then remember perspective whenever you put these sills in you know you're never going to get 100% but does need to be thought about okay well I'm in danger now of possibly overdoing things so my best bet is to take the surround away and sign up well there you have it that's the surround uh, taken away it just needs signing really and I think I'm going to put it down into this bottom right hand corner bit, bit of strength bit of warm color um, and uh, signed as always with the paint that I've used so it's always important to do that I think I used to sign them with um, with ink that was purely um, permanent ink, but I just feel that possibly um, not a bad idea to sign it with the paint that you've used. So there we have it, 19.
great badder here in Essex in the UK. Well there you have it, I hope you've enjoyed watching that video. Um, there is the scene, there is the painting, this is my setup and if you like watching my videos please subscribe to my YouTube channel, click the link bottom right hand corner and I will be uploading many more of these demonstrations in the future. Thank you very much for watching.